Okay. You're up. All right. Dr. George Devane. Thanks for having us. Thank so you. I am uh, Mark Evidanza, principal at North Spain Intermediate School, 5 6 building, and this is uh, Christine Seal. She's our gift support teacher. So I've been at North Strabane. This is my 10th um, year at North Strabane, 14 years in the district as an assistant principal. Um, we'll plug my cousin is at Marky Angle, so he's the state <laughs> champ for Canada. Um, and um, Ms. Seal has been in um, the district as a teacher for 15 years. So we want to share a um, program, project, initiative that um, is very relevant, not only for Canada Mac, but across the United States <coughs> and around the world right now, which is coding. So our topic is taking off with quadcopters. Um, all of you, I'm very well familiar with, um, you know, what Mrs. Laney has done with the Code the Future project. Um, so one of the things that we want to do at the intermediate level is make sure we continue that, what they're doing at the K-4 level, and we have a nice program in place in the middle school and the high school. So the intermediate level, we have a technology education program um, that we do some things with coding, and this is SEAL and the gifted program does things. Um, so now what we're starting to do is we're starting to branch off into the, the other disciplines, um, and that's where this project lends itself. So if you want to hit the next slide, Matt. Um, is there any way to shift it over a little yeah. bit? No, we've had a lot of people up Tip there. Just That's right. <laughs> so, um, so we all know that um, with coding, because I'm sure you've learned a lot about coding and programming over the last year with um, you know, Mrs. Lane's initiative with Code the Future. Um, so coding builds problem solving and critical thinking skills. So we learned about a, um, a program called Tinker and that involves coding at a conference last year and there was a um, there was a gentleman there by the name Bill Ziegler, and, and I'll, I'll show you this in a little bit, but we're not going to do any demonstrations or anything with it because of time's sake. But this little device right here, so he had to set the conference, and what he was doing is he was calling volunteers up, and they were all adults, and he was calling volunteers up, and he had it on a chair, and he gave the, the person an iPad, and he said, you have five minutes, and what I want you to do is I want you to make this take off, I want it to go left 10 feet and come back and land on the chair. Sounds simple, um, block coding. So he demonstrated how to do it in a series of blocks and you drag and drop. So mm -hmm. I'm sitting there um, watching and three people came up and no one could do it. And so it was just five minutes though, um, but it, it was challenging and, but more importantly, it was high interest. So these are adults and we were all, wow, it's pretty cool, this little, little drum. This is a hundred dollars, that's it. So, um, thinking that 5-6 building principle, how could this relate to our school? So learn about a program called Tinker, and Tinker is a coding program, and um, very inexpensive, so and it relates really well to 10-year-olds. Um, to the next slide, Matt. So the, um, if you, in intermediate school, just to touch on the intermediate philosophy, because I'm very passionate about 5-6 um, level, it, it's my niche. And the intermediate level is based on collaborative learning and hands-on learning. Those are the two key things that we promote at the five, six level. Um, so whenever you do something at the intermediate level, you wanna make sure it's engaging for kids. So we look at the idea of bringing the coding program in and we say, is it gonna be high interest for kids? Is it gonna be fun? Is it gonna be engaging? So you have screen time with kids going on and they're manipulating blocks, but when you bring this device in, you add a whole other element because kids are actually seeing what they program. It's programmable. So what happens is kids go on a computer, on the Chromebooks, because every kid has one. They are going on the Tinker program, and they're doing a series of what we'll call missions. And what they do is they go through and they learn how to do simula through simulations. They learn how to code, and then they take this device and they upload it with the Tinker app with an iPad. And then however they program it based on what the teacher wants them to apply. They put, the, they put the mini drone in flight. And this is called a parrot mongo. That's the name of it. Um, so, so pretty neat, um, but again, very high interest. So with coding, um, one of the things is that we feel that, and this, this is my personal opinion, and I know Ms. Seal, we share this, um, is that more importantly than coding, because we, I'm pretty sure we all know in this room that not every kid through our district, um, in any school district, is not going to be a computer science program. Um, 
not every single kid going through is going to come out and say, I want to go be a computer scientist. We know that. We're realistic about that. But what we do know is that every kid needs to develop soft skills. So that's what we're targeting at the immediate level because when kids are interacting with coding and they are um, programming their MIDI drone, if you see the picture of kids right there huddled around, they're problem solving, they're working as a team, they're communicating with each other. Um, and perseverance, soft skill, where kids go, they problem solve, and they need to get their going back to the adult story. They need to get their drone to fly to a certain destination based on a mission their teacher assigned. They have it take off, they program it, they find out that, okay, it didn't make two loops like it was supposed to. So the teacher says, go back to the drawing board. They have to persevere and keep going over and over. And that's where the problem solving comes in. Um, again, very high interest. So again, this is the, uh, this is the, the mini drone. And um, pretty cool, about $110 for a mini drone. It has a little battery. It's a charger, it plugs in. So, um, and we all talk about um, science, technology, engineering, math. That's what, um, that's what this program allows kids to do with the Tinker program. Let me go back, just one, I'm so sorry. So, when we started talking about what we wanted or what we hoped that uh, coding and programming would look like at the 5-6 building, um, <coughs> we started with what's our our end goal. What do we want students to leave fifth and sixth grade knowing about when it comes to coding? And, and the first thing we thought of was, of course, the soft skills, but also just being able to actively create with some, any type of technology, whether it's a drone, whether it's whatever they're being presented with. We wanted them to be able to actively integrate with our skills and, and kind of fly or flourish with that. So we're quick, if you wouldn't mind. This is the first part. So with Tinker, they have Chromebooks, and there's a part on the Chromebook. It, every lesson starts with a video, um, introduction of a skill, and then they go through like a little puzzle or simulation, or they call them DIY challenges, where they're creating code on their Chromebooks, and then they have to sync them to the iPads and complete the challenge with their teammates. Uh, it ends with some type of little assessment. Uh, why teachers love it is because everything, no matter what they're doing, whether it's a quiz, whether it's a puzzle, whether it's a simulation, everything's being um, instantaneously assessed and automatically assessed. So teachers have results of the independent student progress as well as the group progress, which is, which is huge for when we're teaching because we want to make sure that they're understanding the, the concepts. Are they understanding loops? Are they understanding variables? Are they understanding basic Boolean like logic? So this is an example of what they see on the iPad. Um, what's cool about this is we'll say like a group is comprised of two to three students and they're all trying to solve for one challenge. All three of the students are going to have different codes. Even if it's based on the same skill, they're always different. So by uploading it and working together, they get to problem solve, debug, and figure out, and usually see that more than one, there's more than one way to solve the problem. What's really great about Tinker, and we haven't been able to fully explore this just yet, but <clears throat> right now we're programming in visual blocks. There's the ability to go to Java and Python. When we had a little in service for our fifth grade teachers, the middle school technology teachers came down, and everyone was going through all the simulations that the students needed to go through. Our fifth grade teachers did visual block programming. The middle school tech teachers were able to do it in JavaScript and Python. Is it realistic to think that we're going to send middle students to middle school being able to actually type out text code? Probably not, but the fact that we have the opportunity is pretty amazing. It doesn't mean we're not going to have some kids, because that'll be our next thing we get into, um, that we could have some kids going into the Java level. Um, you know, we talked to Ms. Laney about that. And, um, would she like to see every kid go to the Java level? Absolutely, but we're, we're going slow, and, um, and we're challenging kids right now, and, and we're based on all the teachers are giving us as input, and we're seeing the kids are challenged with the block. Right so now. these children, the Java letter, is that at the middle school level? They're with the tech teachers. They are doing some actual uh, script coding where they're actually typing it out. If you go back over here, so like in Python or Java, when somebody's coding something, they're typing those words and those commands out um, using the keypad. With Tinker, 
right when, even in the, the drones course, the first thing they'll have is a block that just says like, okay, walk or jump or on start. But they can switch it over to see what it looks like in Java or Python. And then there's an app, there are two courses in the Tinker programming that allow them, that teach them specific JavaScript and Python. There's even one that, that is on web design that teaches them HTML and CSS, which do you have your six, any of your sixth graders doing that Not at yet. all? No, no. We, we want to. We, believe yeah. me, we do. We, we have them. There. They're, they're using the Tinker program because we bought a license for every There's probably a, few, a lot of kids who are anxious to move mm -hmm. on. There, yeah, there are some. It is, I mean, as much, even though they've been exposed to block coding for a while, it's, it's still. Can you access, can these children, they can't access this from home, right? On their own computers. I mean, they could if they had a login. Yeah. Like and access to there. So if you if if hypothetically you guys log those kids in those classes names in and they could go into their Canamac whatever power score or whatever could they do it? No, they could log into this. This is web based. They could log into, okay. into the program. I just wonder. Yeah, they just don't have access to the drones, but the right. Drones oh no, just, I understand. Yeah. So it's just like we what we do is we purchase um, our subscription is for eight courses mm -hmm. and the drone one oh one is what we use for fifth grade. That's just one of the courses and then we have other courses designated for sixth grade. Okay. So yeah, it's web based so they can log in from that. Oh, okay. You know, you're you're working with students right now who haven't had not been subjected to the code to the future at the lower levels, K through four. Right. So imagine the skill set those kids are going to be coming to you yeah. with, right? Uh, when they get to yeah. fifth and sixth grade, yeah, we just say it'll, it'll get easier and easier for kids. So that's that's the neat challenge about our level is just like middle school has the challenge to keep progressing more kids. So that's what we hope to do. Um, and we just actually got a grant with um, the intermediate level, and um, so we're going to be using you, for kids. Are you are you inclined? Are, is it are you in, have you been inclined to to share this with the other school? We are. We have a date set up in um, in June and. Some of the teachers already know. So Mr. About Klein it. Hands will be with yep. the Tinker also. Yep. So when they were here last month, right. they also bought. They're right. going to share what they're doing. Okay. So half the day, part of the day, will be them doing Tinker and doing the drums, and the other part of the day will be Cecil Intermediate sharing the programming of Ozobot and the Hummingbird robotic skills. Service day. So, in service day. And in service day. Yes, we've already set Good. that up for oh, the great. end of the year. Oh, great. Yes. So you're seeing um, a melding of tools now. Right. So they're using the tool of that drone to to program, and that they have this ability to scaffold out. Right. And 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 our fourth graders, well, you all know, have seen the visual block code from Code to the Future. So that's right. similar code. And then when the kids, like right now, they're in uh, the third and fourth graders are in Minecraft. They're switching now to JavaScript. JavaScript. Okay. And they can toggle just like they can toggle at their level. So, so uh, Mr. Daniels is right. As the skill sets come up, they may not even be doing block coding in another two or three years right. because the, the the knowledge base of block coding may be so strong. They may start off for a couple yeah. of days. When we do get to the middle school, those zeros that you saw a year ago, yes. those little balls, yeah. they're they're definitely doing a type of JavaScript. Yeah. And then we have that class that we started this year in eighth grade. With CMU, that is that Python class. Right. My concern was only that the two two different uh, five six centers didn't have the same curriculum with this program because I would hate for these two different groups of kids to come together and one sure. know one and one not know one. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So they're still during coding because they're these two groups the of five of six these two groups of five six kids we have right now have missed out on um, a new school. Good. They are going to miss out on the new school over here, and I would hate for that. And they missed sure, out yeah. on the code of the future in the K to four. So I would hope that yeah. these. We're both doing the coding. Yeah. The tools could be different, but that's like any school. Okay. You know, the tools can be different, but the concepts are there. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, this is a terrible screenshot. Sorry, <laughs> but it it was just to show that the drones. Um, there's a web page coding. There's Python, and the different. It goes from K up through eight, although. Arguably, we're not. The students aren't ready for that eighth, eighth level, that advanced programming. <coughs> uh, so we broke it down into a set of missions, how, how we started. I started last year in the spring with my sixth grade gifted support students. The reason we did it with them was because they, even though they hadn't experienced Code to the Future, 
they've had me since second grade, and we've been doing Scratch since second grade, although it was just gifted support students. So they, they were familiar with it. Um, so it would be a similar introductory level as, as our upcoming fifth graders had. Uh, my sixth graders loved it. Um, that's what we used. We used her program to evaluate the gifted kids. Is this going to be challenging? Is this something that we could put into our fifth or sixth grade? And it, it was challenging. It was yep, but, um, definitely successful. So one of the things um, <coughs> I have to recognize our four science teachers, which is uh, Ms. Burns, Mr. Trosco, Mrs. Snyder, Mr. Zimmerman. So anytime you have an idea, you want to make sure that you get your teachers on board. So that's why we piloted it with Ms. Cecile, and then she was instrumental in helping the teachers learn the professional development side of it. Um, and all four of these teachers took a hold of this, and they were they were excited. We went through a day. Um, we spent a, a half of a day. They went through the simulations of the program because, you know, they're they need to give feedback too because they're going to be the ones implementing with the kids, and they all loved it. Um, and they said great things about it. And if you have adults that love it, you automatically know that the ten year olds going to love it because again, it's the high interest. So um, they're all teachers on board, and um, right now. We did this earlier in the school year, so it was about a nine or 12 week unit, so we'll tighten that up as we go. Um, go to the next slide, Matt. Um, so the purchase of materials, like I talked about a little bit, um, kind of three things involved. The Tinker program, <coughs> which we spent about $2,000 for 430 license. Um, we bought some uh, mini iPads, which is about $2,500, and then the mini drones with the batteries and everything, we spent for about 10, about 1,500. So all said and done, about $6,000. Pretty inexpensive project. Um, and we can just keep um, replenishing. But the neat thing about this is these mini drones are very, very durable, and the only thing that you replace on them are the propellers. And other than that, maybe recycle some batteries. But um, for $110, we, we hope to get some good use out of them. We had 230 kids last year because we had an extra class. And so 230 kids used those 10 drones for 12 weeks. Um, you know, they were hitting lockers, they were hitting walls, and they were hitting the floor, because when you program it, it doesn't go wrong, it flips straight into the locker. And, um, you know, at first some teachers were thinking, hey, are these going to get beat up, are they going to last? And um, super durable. Um, so they're working. So um, the teachers, again, kudos to them, because what they did was, we teach science in fifth grade four days a week. So what they did was, because we have to share the resources, because it was $6,000, you can't go buy each teacher their own set and spend an uh, iPad and spend $24,000. It's just not doable um, with the school budget. So what we did was the teachers came up with the idea of they each have a STEM day. And so on the STEM day, every kid has a Chromebook all throughout the week. So they're doing their programming with Tinker. And then on the STEM day, it's their day to get all the resources. And that's when kids carry out commissions. So they've done all the programming. Now they're syncing with the iPad and the mini drone. And we have kids in teams of three, because there's 10, there's usually about anywhere from 26 to 28 students in the class. And um, so that's worked out really well. And then after the unit was over, um, the teachers are still carrying on having STEM day. And now we're looking for another, um, you know, they're still using Tinker, but we'll be looking for next year. Hopefully we have something um, with the grant that we're getting. Probably the Hunger Robotic kits will be put in to carry that on. Good. So um, going from screen, I already talked about this a little bit, um, but the, the neat thing is that in this picture here, um, they had to design an obstacle for us, kind of at the end of the unit, what they did. And kids, they used hula hoops, as you can see, and they flew the drone through the room. Again, you can do the drones manually with an iPad and fly around. We, that doesn't happen. We, have, we make the kids program the iPad to build problem solving. Um, it's pretty challenging when you have an obstacle course that has to have eight or ten stops in the room and stay in the air and for a kid to put all of the code in sequence and they go back to the drawing board because it made a right hit into the wall. They have to keep going back and back and that comes back to the problem skill, um, the problem solving and the perseverance. Um, but they use the physical space of the building, they use classrooms, hallways. So when this unit's going on, if you come to the building, you'll see drones flying in the hallway, the classroom, <laughs> in the lobby. Yeah, you heard this little buzzing noise. Um, and then, like I said to one teacher, because we had kids, they were hitting in the locker. It's like, they're they're fine. They're horrible. Yeah, so they're learning. It's fun. So, um, you know, like I said at the beginning of the presentation, um, you know, we're preparing kids for careers. That's what we're all in the business of education for. Um, is every kid going to be a computer scientist? And again, 
my personal opinion, absolutely not. Um, it's valuable what we're preparing them for in their career of computer science. We know many kids probably will go down that path, but what we feel is essential is the soft kids that kids are getting, which is teamwork, communication, and problem solving, and the perseverance. And those are just a couple of the soft skills that kids are developing, but that's our focus, and that's what's essential at the five, six. I mean, think about it. If you're in the future, 20 years down the road, when these kids are out getting jobs, how do we know that what they do for a living, even a carpenter or a construction worker who's building a house, doesn't have an actual program that will use those skills. Because we don't know. Yeah, but they're going to use those soft skills. Yeah, but I mean, they may have programs that they have to use coding for. I mean, we don't know. Yeah. So it's really, I mean, that's all you hear about on TV. And I, I saw a, um, I don't know who it was, some movie star, yeah. actually had a program that they were supporting on coding. And I was like shocked. So we do, and we're, we're ahead of the, the game here, and I'm very proud of this. This is a really good uh, program, and I'm glad you guys are continuing the education of our kids. So this is just a, a article that we wrote just about this whole initiative that we did at our school. Okay. Um, again, I want to thank Mrs. Seal here. Um, you know, it all started up with a pilot, and um, no pun intended, in her classroom, <laughs> and, um, and that's how we judged it. And, and she's such an asset in our building. Because when this was going on, when teachers started it, the teachers were going to her, and um, you know, for problem solving, troubleshooting, because it's, it wasn't easy up front, um, you know, teaching kids. But it's pretty neat because the teachers then, like I said, they designed the missions, and the teachers are really looking forward to it next year to continue it. One of the things that I want to say is Mrs. Sill um, was probably the first teacher in this district to learn how to use Scratch program. So when she stepped into her role as a gifted support teacher after leaving her classroom at South Central, that was one of the first things that she started learning how to do. And I leaned on her to run professional development three, four years ago when we were starting this initiative before even Code to the Future started, we were dabbling. And she ran some of those professional development sessions teaching our teachers how to use Scratch. So I want to, she has been remarkable, been using Scratch for over a decade, I'm thinking. Right. Yes, over, that's how long coding has been around um, easily. And uh, and, it, and Scratch has not gone away. It's just right. gotten better and better over the years. And that's that free program from MIT. That's good. So know, thank you. You, you simply mentioned that the two of you jointly wrote an article and you passed that out. Um, you failed to mention that it actually got published in a magazine, right? So maybe you tell us more about that. I think we, we had a recognition item uh, yeah. about that, but yes, we go ahead. Yeah, that's, that was our project, and that's what, um, you know, and that's, that's kind of like the enjoyment part of it, after you use something at the school, and you get to write about it, and it's published, because it, it's not the it's it's not the personal gratification of it, it is that you're getting more stripping and more out there. Because all of this here goes to other administrators and teachers, um, in Pennsylvania, and it's you know it's it's a nice um, it's a nice way to share um, you know to the field and it talks about our school district. So um, thank you. And I'm proud to do that because again I'm I'm very proud of North Carolina State School. I hope to retire from there. Uh -huh. um, so um, they, and I know the school probably feels the same way. It's, it's a great level with uh, working with 10, 11 year olds. They come in every year at 10, 11. We continue to get order, um, but it's a um, it's a great place to work. It was a great job. Great job. Thank you. Great nice job. job. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you.